So the title of my sermon today is Calming the Storm. And here we read today that Jesus calms the storm. Okay. Uh, before we go into this, uh, let's zoom out and see where this text is actually located. Because um, just before uh, verse 35, um, you have verses 33 and 34, which talk about Jesus' teaching on the parables. Okay? So, and then if you go a little further up, it, there are, there's a bunch of clusters of teachings on Jesus' parables. Right? And if you go way, way, way back to chapter 4, same chapter, um, verses 1 and 2, it starts with Jesus. It starts with Jesus, and I'll read it for you. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake, and it's the Sea of Galilee. That crowd, the crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake. So imagine Jesus, he's at the Sea of Galilee at the shore, there's an immense crowd gathering to him, so he wants to effectively reach and teach the people. So he goes into the boat, you know, just offshore, and is teaching, okay, and he's preaching. While all the people were along the shore at the water's edge, he taught them many things by parables and in his teaching said, so along goes chapter 4. So imagine Jesus, he's in the boat, and he's teaching, this symbolizes something very important because this boat exactly, okay? Jesus tells them on that day when evening came, okay? Verse 35, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Same boat, same word proclaimed through Jesus. It was preaching through parables on the kingdom, the kingdom, what it would look like, what the kingdom is like, what the people of the kingdom should have, what kind of faith they should show. Think about this, because this is very prominent for me, because in the boat where Jesus proclaimed the message, where the disciples heard what it was to be like, living in the kingdom, having the vision of the kingdom, being a Christ follower, having faith, having all these content information, now Jesus wants to apply that in life. Because, okay, I taught you about what it means to be in the kingdom. I talked to you about, in parables, how the kingdom would be like. Now, how does it apply to your life? And today's text is just that. You have the content of the kingdom. We hear about what it means to be a Christian. We hear about how it is like faith to be shown through our lives as we live the kingdom dream. And then life just comes in front of us like a storm. And today's message is exactly that. How does the content of the kingdom apply to our everyday situation where wind storm is coming? My boat is shaking. What does the kingdom message connect with that? It doesn't seem to help. It doesn't seem to calm the waves. It doesn't seem to stop the wind. It doesn't seem to shake, stop shaking the boat. It seems distant. The kingdom message, what does it have to do with me? That's what Jesus wanted to teach the disciples. It has everything to do with you. Sometimes we come to church, we hear the message, but it seems so irrelevant. We hear about the kingdom. We know it is good. We know that we as Christians should live a Christian life. But then storm comes, wind blows, squalls come down from heaven. And we are afraid. We, for, we just forget what we learned the whole day. We just forget what, why Jesus was here in the first place anyway. I have to deal with the wind. I have to deal with the waves. I have to deal with the shaking. And I'm lost. Is that where we are? 
You have the gracious word of God. You have the Lord of Lords as Savior. But when the wind blows, when the tides are high, we are afraid. The kingdom message that I just heard all day doesn't mean anything to me. I just want to get out of this storm. Where is Jesus? Where is God? Does he even care? Look in today's scripture. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. Don't you sometimes feel like that? I need Jesus. Where are you? You find him and he's sleeping. He's doing nothing. The fact itself communicates to me he doesn't care. What's all this teaching about the kingdom? He's asleep. Doesn't he care? I'm scared. I need somebody to get me out of the storm. Oh, Jesus does care. He's sleeping. Why? Because Jesus is the Lord of lords. He is the creator of heaven and earth. If we have faith, In Jesus, we would know that He cares. We would know that He cares so much that He came into our world, incarnated Word, God, to save us. He cared so much that He died for us on the cross. Of course, He cares. So now we have to have a new perspective on Jesus sleeping. Why is He sleeping? Jesus is teaching us. If you do truly love the kingdom, if the kingdom of God that I just preached all day is the message for you, then you will know that I will be with you. You will know that I will take care of you. You will know that I will make everything right. I need your faith. Where is that? Jesus is showing us how we as true Christian people who have faith in God should look like in the midst of the storm. That's calmness within calamity. In the midst of the storm, Jesus shows us what? Sleep. Only a person who is in peace of mind, peace of heart, can have a good night's sleep. Hmm? If you're stressed out with life, complications are around you all day, you can't get sleep. You need to take sleeping pills or exercise yourself to sleep. Or maybe some people read scripture to sleep, but anyway... You need something to make you sleep. Jesus is saying, the kingdom vision, if you truly have that, you will have peace that the world cannot know. And you will sleep like me amidst the storms. Why you disciples do not have that? And the message is so clear. It is because lack of faith. Lack of faith, if you, you know, untackle that a little bit, means lack of understanding. It doesn't make sense. Lack of faith, if you look really into that, is the message that Jesus preached all day, the vision of the kingdom, It's not really absorbed. Or you heard it, yes, but it seems kind of irrelevant. If the disciples truly knew that they were disciples of the kingdom and that the vision casted out by Jesus is theirs 
they would know that they will not die in the storm because they have a mission to do. They have a God-willed message to preach. They have a God-willed vision to accomplish. And this storm is not going to stop them because God is there with them. Sometimes we are blinded by our situations. The storms, look at the tides, it's going over my head. Look at how the boat is shaking. Analyze that and we are out here. Is that how we should look at the world? Or as Jesus, with the vision of the kingdom, just sleep like a baby? Because he is so confident and sure. Jesus knows, I'm not going to die by a storm. I'm going to die by the cross. You are not going to die here. You are going to be disciples of men, fishers of men, going out to all Judea, all Samaria, all to the world. You are not going to die here. Jesus had the vision of the kingdom. The disciples did not. Therefore, the current waves and wind and the squall that is coming down from them scares them out. Are we like that? What are the winds? What are the waves that frighten us? What are the things that shake our boat? Yet, we hear so much of God's vision. Teacher, don't you care? I'm hurting, Lord. Look at my situation. My financial crisis, my relationship is going down. Don't you care, Jesus? Why aren't you speaking back to me? Why, why do you seem so silent? Why are you closing your eyes? Why are you sleeping? Brothers and sisters, Jesus cares. He wants to stretch our faith so that amidst the storm that we will have peace, confident, a boldness, a boldness that you will go out, look upon the seas, and be still, be quiet. And shout to the world, that God is doing his thing. If you look at today's scripture, few uh, scriptures come to mind, especially Psalm 46 and 10. It says, Be still and know I am God. Jesus is actually saying, Be still to the waves and the storm. But he is also saying to us, the disturbed, the troubled hearted, be still. Stand firm. Look to God, not your circumstances. If the vision of the kingdom is truly growing in you, situations and circumstances do not matter because if you are following my will and obeying my words, my will will be done. The thing is, do we have that faith? Do we connect with his vision? That's the issue. Not the wind, not the waves, not the boat shaking. So let's not focus on trying to fix and calm the seas and the wind, but hold on to the one who gives us life, who gives us purpose, and who leads us to a vision of the kingdom. As I was meditating on today's verse, I also 
connected this with the Exodus event. Do you remember Moses leading all the Israelites out from Egypt? No? Where, what do they face? The Red Sea. The people are complaining. Pharaoh's chariots are trying to harm us and kill us. Why did you lead us out here to die? Just let us just serve the Egyptians again. Why? Don't they have burial grounds that you want to bury us here? How did Moses re reply? In Exodus 14, 13, Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Same thing Jesus is saying. Stand firm. Another translation would be, be still. And you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. We lack faith. And Jesus wants to grow our faith. So he will intentionally sleep sometimes. And that's the message that we should know very quickly. I will trust in you, Lord, because you do care. So if today's message and text is about calmness in the storm, if we do hold on to Jesus, the story would look like this. The storm is coming, the wind is blowing, the boat is shaking, mighty waves are going up, it's dark, I cannot see, my Lord is sleeping. We should sleep too. Or we should come out to the boat and look at the wind, look at the waves, and proclaim and shout, I am not afraid. My Lord is with me. I have a purpose for the kingdom. Therefore, the waves, the wind, the squall will not frighten me. Be still. Be calm. In the name of Jesus. I have a vision of the kingdom to accomplish. Be still my soul, so I can look upon you. Salvation, the deliverance from God upon us. This is what Jesus wanted to teach the disciples along with the surprised the statement they made, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? Yes, every incident similar to this is actually stretching our faith so that we know who Jesus is more and more. So brothers and sisters, as Christians, let us not be afraid but be excited when you see the waves, when you see the wind going stronger and stronger and the boat shaking more and more. Let us be filled with the Spirit and ride along the tides as Californians, surfers on the waves. Let us know who our Lord is. As the sea, the waters calm down. The faith of the disciples grow. As we finish this small incident of life, the storms of life, we realize we have met a greater Jesus. We realize that he has blessed us to look anew the world and situation that comes to us. We realize a greater faith 
that has been given by our gracious Lord. Brothers and sisters, accept the facts of life and hold on dear to Christ's vision of his kingdom. And as true disciples and followers and believers, let the whole world know that Jesus lives. Let's pray. I want to invite everybody to a corporate prayer. And looking upon today's text, let's think about what our storms are. What are the winds that are blowing? What are the things that are shaking my stance of comfort? What is shaking me? What am I afraid of? It's the messages that we hear, the biblical reading that we are doing, irrelevant, irrelevant from us. No, no. Jesus invites us to a greater adventure in faith. He wants us to know that He is Lord. He wants us to know that He truly cares. He wants us to stretch our faith amidst the storm. As oceans come and tides come and wind blows and storms fall down, He wants us to know that He is Lord and He will protect us and guide us until His will is done. Let's pray to Jesus, our Lord who cares and who is with us today. Let's pray.